Sonic the Hedgehog is a series that changes a lot, and while some of these changes have given us some of the best games in the series, others have led to not so great results. The Storybook series, for example, while not being one of the best gameplay-wise, is one of the most fun visual and storytelling experiences in the series. But other times the series has changed, it's been for the worse, like Sonic Heroes coming right after SE2, and then Sonic Lost World right after Generations. The series seems far too happy to jump around between ideas instead of sticking to what works and expanding upon it. The few times they've actually stuck to a gameplay style, they've constantly improved upon it, like SA1 to SA2 and Colors to Generations. It's this uncertainty of where to go with the franchise and instead looking to what's popular at the time, which really doomed Sega in the Sonic Boom era and in the Dark Age. To examine why they've been doing this and why it's been such an issue, we should first go back to Sonic Adventure 1 and 2. Now these are games that I don't talk about too often, but they are ones that I enjoy. SA1 is pretty good, SA2 is pretty good aside from all the mech stages, which, you know, not very good. But one thing I can say about both these games is that they are way better than Sonic Heroes. And clearly this isn't my sentiment alone, as a lot of people seem to have echoed this. One would think that after two successful games, Sega would want to reel it back and just do the same thing again, but improve upon the elements that people didn't like about the previous games. But no, instead they decided to switch up the controls for a different experience. And this is where it all began. On top of Sonic Heroes being the beginning of the practices that led Sega to make Sonic 06, being that they rushed their developers and didn't give them enough time to make a finished product, it also began the Sega switching around and shifting ideas for what to do with the franchise, as it clearly seemed lost. And the next entry after Sonic Heroes really didn't help things either, because this is one of my least favorite Sonic games, Shadow the Hedgehog. And all I'm gonna say is, this game blows. Now I'm not opposed to giving Shadow the Hedgehog a spin-off game, but the fact that they made it targeted towards the edgy teenagers at the time, you know, playing their shooter games, so, they decided to give a Sonic character a gun. That's just not the greatest idea in my opinion. And it was clearly a decision that was just made to chase trends. But after Shadow the Hedgehog, they decided to again reinvent the wheel by going with Sonic 06, a super realistic and gritty direction for the franchise. So to summarize, post Sonic Adventure 1, every single game has tried to be something different, and has tried to chase current trends at the time, or just being something different from the main series and every single one of those was a failure, at least critically in comparison to what came before. So after the failure of Sonic 06, Sonic Team decided to step back and look at the character, and they decided to go with a speed focus for their next game, as it's one of the main aspects of Sonic the Hedgehog. They were going to take one of the core fundamentals of the character and put it into the gameplay, which you know, not a bad idea, and the boost levels in that game turned out to be pretty fun. At least, most of them. But then, there was a one Sega higher-up, or Sonic Team employee, that decided, Oh hey, Twilight Princess is pretty cool, and I've been enjoying playing God of War recently. You know, I think Sonic can do that. And that's how we got this abomination of a gameplay style within a main Sonic game. But to their credit, it seems that they finally learned around this time, and for the next two games, hear me out, a whole two games, they actually went with what worked, and made them purely boost games, while finding other fun ways to pad out the gameplay that was actually enjoyable to play with. And you know what happened after that? These games were perfectly well received, they sold well, and they brought the series back from near obscurity. And a few new issues that these games did raise, they weren't that serious, it was just a lack of story, and with generations a lack of original locations. So everyone expected the next game to be an evolution, a new step forward for the boost formula. They should just keep going, and work with what they've got going here. So what did Sonic Team do? In their infinite wisdom, Sonic Team decided to switch up the gameplay formula completely, revamp every single one of Sonic's movements, options, and physics, and they just made an entirely new different gameplay style. Out of literally nowhere. Was it at the very least better than what came before? Of course it wasn't. Lost World threw away all the good momentum, for lack of a better word, that the series had going with colors and generations, and the boost stages from Unleashed. It took the series in a brand new direction, but this new direction wasn't exactly all that good, and was once again, trying to be a Mario game. And what's better, literally right after this game, they tried to reinvent the series AGAIN! With an entirely new reboot set, an entirely new universe, new characters, new comics, new spin-offs, a new TV show, new games that were all really bad, and was a massive disaster leading to mass layoffs at the company, and hurting the next game which was Sonic Forces. Which to its credit, did go back to a successful formula, just didn't execute it as well. You'd think that after all this, Sega would have finally learned their lesson, made a Sonic game that was truly like what came before. 
a true original new boost game that's actually got time and money put into it, maybe returning to the adventure formula. We'd be fine with all these. But instead, they decided to change everything up again. But this time, it was to a better result, admittedly. Sonic Frontiers is, I can't deny, one of the best Sonic games we've gotten in a quite a bit of time. But the base of the game is still built on Sega trying to echo what other companies have done and just putting Sonic into it. Sonic should try to build his own legacy, try to be original, creative, like what the old games were doing at the time. Sonic was created to stop the trends of the industry, like Mario, and put out a revolutionary new experience, in which they succeeded. But unfortunately, it just doesn't seem like they're doing that anymore. If there's anything that you should take away from this, it's that Sonic is lacking in a bit of that substance, a bit of the flair that he used to have. And all I wish is for that to return, whether that be in the new 2D Sonic game or the next mainline title. But for now, all we can do is wait. So that's it for me, Davron, signing off.